It's all about budgeting our money, leaving us just enough to eat on, practically, and some household expenses, and then we're broke. We are literally, the paycheck's gone, we had more months than money, and here we go again. So it's just a cycle. Let's make some more payments. Whereas I teach, let's forget about your payments. Let's see what we can get you into that's going to serve you. What's going on, everybody? I'm Chris Noggle, and welcome back to Money School Podcast. You know, today we're going to talk about some interesting things, but the guest that I have coming on, who I'm going to announce in just a second, showed me something that I always knew was possible, and I follow things with money, so make no two ways about it, but I never really thought it was possible. You ever have anything like that in your life where you know you can do something, you know it's possible, but until someone literally paves the way for you, you're just like, I didn't think I could do that. And what I'm talking about is paying my mortgage off. And just to put it into perspective, my mortgage, we have about $650,000 left on my mortgage. And it matures or balloons, as, as some of you might know, in 2027. So I kind of had a dilemma. I needed that mortgage paid off. So my guest today showed me how to pay my mortgage completely off well before the 2027 balloon. And here's the best part. I didn't have to work any harder. I didn't have to work any longer. I didn't have to save really any more money. All I had to do was change the flow of how my money worked or the velocity of what my money did. And that is exactly what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the journey that Christy Van has gone on, the journey she's had in her life that landed her to be one of the utmost teachers of velocity banking. Now, maybe you've heard about it. I don't know if you have or have not, but again, that's what you're going to hear about. So without further, further ado, Christy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Chris. Absolutely. You know, one of the things I always like to do is, you know, not dive right into velocity banking, but I, I kind of like to just have the audience get to know a little bit about you. I mean, if you if you found velocity banking, there was a reason. A lot of people find it because they're buried in debt or they just have some reason that they need to figure out how how to, you know, pay their mortgage off or pay their debts down or get their cars paid for, whatever it is. What's your story in in did you start in, in finance or how did you land here? No, absolutely not. I am not a mathematician. I do not enjoy math. I do not enjoy finances. That's what's so humorous about this whole thing and how it's come to be. Um, I literally started out as a divorcee who uh, had two children, um, very stuck very stuck. That's why I have a compassion for people that are in a negative cash flow, uh, who have bad credit scores, um, who are trying to just work extra jobs to keep the family going. Wow, I have a story that I could write a book about when it comes to my first husband, who um, literally laid down and just decided he wasn't going to help me at all financially. So I was looking for extra work. I did things. I was. I'm in the. I'm in a union. So uh, the pipe fitters union is where I started. Um, I am a certified welding inspector, actually. So my whole background is welding, and <laughs> I have. I never really would have enjoyed, guessed that. I know, right? <laughs> I love, love, love steel. So. Um, I have a, a real relationship with refineries and uh, hotels and any kind of structures that are going up. That has been my passion. So I, uh, if you see some of my videos, videos, I'll talk about welders. And that's only because I have dealt with them one-on-one -on -one and I know what they go through when they're out on the road. It is a real struggle, not just financially, but being away from your family for months at a time, uh, I think that that was the real um, struggle for me was not being with my girls, just not getting to see them every day. And that's kind of damaging to a family as well. So my idea was just to work. You know, I worked seven twelves. 
So uh, it was it was a real hard struggle. But at the same time, I absolutely love my work and I would go back today. You know, I, I don't have a problem with it. I enjoy it. There is a lot of climbing and people don't understand that because these refineries are two, three hundred feet tall. And I've been four hundred and five feet up was my highest climb. I have pictures. I absolutely love it. And my husband now is afraid of heights. So it's like he can't even understand the joy there. But I kind of uh, go off when I talk about my career because it paid well uh, when I got up to the inspection side of it. Uh, but at the beginning, um, I was clearing $500 a week, and I thought that was great money. And for my area, it probably is. Uh, and it was for sure when I started in Velocity Banking, which was about 2008, I want to say. I can't remember exactly when I first learned about it, but I know it was Matt Pilmore with VIP was where I first heard of Velocity Banking. He doesn't really teach on it. He's a real estate investor. But wow, when I heard him talking about that one day, I was driving to Facebook because I was helping uh, inspect their buildings, uh, data centers that they put up in Forest City, North Carolina. I uh, loved that job, but I would listen to YouTube all the way there and all the way back because it was a three and a half hour drive. So I learned about Velocity Banking driving one day. Uh, I had actually been praying for an answer because I was now divorced, um, had two children, uh, three children, actually, had had another one. And it was like I could not make my paychecks work. I was paid weekly, thank God, because I don't know what I would have done had I had to have waited two weeks to get a check. But, you know, when I heard Matt Pilmore talk about that that day, it was like um, complete mind-boggling game changer because I was I was like, what is he doing? You know, he would take these numbers and they were disappearing right before my eyes. So that's how I was introduced to Velocity Banking. And I went home that evening and I started, I got out all of my finances and I just started looking at what I had, how I could apply, whatever. And it was on right there. So from that point, which I believe has been about 14 years ago, um, I really have dug into Velocity even further because it changed my whole life financially. When I came out of the divorce, I took everything to get rid of him. And I say that in all due respect, but it was like I had to break away from it. It was an abusive marriage. Uh, and it had been ongoing for 17 years. So it was like when I decided to step away, I didn't even care if bankruptcy was the result. I wanted to get away from that. And the only way that I knew he would sign off was if I went with no money, all the debt, no child support, anything. I just wanted out. So God is good. I give him all the glory because the way I stepped away from that, I really should probably be dead. Uh, but the way it worked out, he kind of did his thing and I moved off actually to another state to get away. But it was such a game changer financially for me that I could, as a single parent, making nothing because I had to leave my position when I moved away to so get, wait a second. You know. So let me pause you right there. You, when, when this whole like divorce happened and you, you got away, you took on all the debt, you got yes. no money, you had to support the children and you had to leave your union job. Yes. Yes. Wow. Uh, at that time, uh, my first husband would not allow me to work out in the field. So I had to work an office position. So I was an executive assistant, I guess you would call it. It was a wonderful position. But like I said, it only paid $500 a week. I had also taken on being a mortgage, um, like not a loan officer, but I kind of assisted. So that paid me a little bit on the side. So I would do that on weekends. Uh, so, and I was also an insurance agent. So I was trying to draw money anywhere I could get it because this husband would not work. So when I stepped away, 
uh, to get out of the situation, I literally moved out of the state. And I mean, with the clothes on my back and my children's back. We pulled schools, we moved, we took off. So it was a real transition just to get to another state uh, to figure out what I was going to do for work while I was waiting on my inspections was what I was building up towards. But I did not have it. So I had to take on jobs where I was a payroll manager, actually, believe that or not. I've done a little bit of everything. So it's like, uh, I worked that while I was studying for, for my CWI, which is the Certified Welding Inspections. And it was, like I said, everything just kind of unfolded. And when I learned about Velocity Banking, it was totally such a game changer that I all of a sudden had control of my finances. And I want to teach people that it's it's been a desire since I first got my finances in order and to just let people know there's hope out there financially, whether you're a single parent or whether you're in a family. I mean, that's beautiful. But at the same time, the struggle is real. I don't care uh, what situation you're in, even if you're a single person with student loans, the struggle is real and it is real painful. And I think that through my journey of coming into full-time teaching of finances, which totally was out of my control, I did not plan to do that. Um, it was amazing that um, people are getting help. And I was just sitting before we went on today reading the comments of the gratefulness that people are finding an, an avenue that they didn't even know existed. So I think that that's how I begin my mornings. That's the way I end my mornings or my evenings, I'm sorry. And it's just, I want to read what people are doing and how they're doing it and how they're helping each other to do it. So I feel like that my YouTube channel has developed a real community of not just people, you know, sliding through learning something. They are working with each other. My Facebook groups are amazing. The people get on there and they just answer each other's questions. And then I'll pop on two or three times a day and see, you know, how I can help, what what input I can give. And it is it has been an absolute joy uh, watching this unfold. Well, you've created a culture. I think that's what they would call that. You know, the fact that your folks are going on to the Facebook and answering other maybe newer people that are just visiting or just seeing it for the first time and they're helping answer that and tell their story. So I think one unique thing, you know, is I'm sure a lot of people that will listen to this are going through something like what you did. Maybe it's an abusive relationship. Maybe it's just a toxic relationship where the person just sucks all the life out of them. There's probably a lot of people that don't take that leap. They don't leave that relationship. They don't do what they should because of finances, because they look at it and they say, I couldn't make it without him or her. You know, I, I there's no way I could do it. If I leave now, I'll be broke and I wouldn't have any money and I'd lose my job and I and I'd have all this debt. But like, I think that's that you're the light in the darkness for these folks that are going through this because you did that. You left everything took all the debt and, and and if i may ask like roughly how much debt did you walk away with um i had a home at that time that i was paying for anyway um i think probably a total of 150 to 200,000 because i had the home i had a second mortgage is so funny because i teach so against second mortgages today uh, but I had a little bit of credit card debt and I had car loans. So um, I'm thinking it had to be at least 150 to 200,000. And for somebody that leaves their job and doesn't have any way to make their, I'm going to tell you, I had a car repossessed when I got to the other state. So it was <laughs> a lot has happened in the last 15 years. A lot they has happened really? to the top. Do they what? really pull up in the middle of the night and then you wake up and your car is gone? Is that how it really in happened? In the middle of the night. It was like 2 or 3 a.m. Uh, it scared me to death because I didn't even, I had never experienced anything like that. Didn't realize they would really do that. But absolutely. They don't care that they, I mean, 
they don't care. They don't care if you're sitting there with tears streaming down your face saying, hey, you know, let me let me give you something right now. They don't care. They're going to take your car. And then the price you pay to get it back is unbelievable. So I have been there and done that. (laughs) You use the exact word toxic. People are in toxic relationships and they think it's normal. I am here to tell you that it is not okay. It's not normal. It's not okay. Uh, A narcissist is, wow, that's the worst situation. Uh, And then they're claiming they're bipolar and they're claiming they're sick and they're, you know, and they're claiming that uh, they don't want to work anymore. And it's, you know, you're the bad person because you're trying to, you know, push them to do better or whatever. It's just such confusion it has to be straight from satan because everything is so confusing uh and you feel like you're stuck and you know i'll just be honest i'm in the church and it's like i was being told by church leaders oh you can't you can't step out of this marriage because you know that that wouldn't be right in god's eyes and i'm like i i fell for all of that and there's scripture that backs up people that are going through these situations So when I found those scriptures, I took off running because it wasn't that I didn't love this person and I didn't want this to work. This is a toxic relationship to where you think you're in love and doing everything right when really you're getting used and abused and you have no peace. And God has not called us to live like that. He's called us to peace. And that's what I said when I found out that I didn't have to stay in the struggle, that I could step back. Uh, I had a friend tell me, he said, you're on a roller coaster, just step off. And I'm like, that was like so enlightening to me for some reason. And I stepped off. And when I did, I have never felt such peace and joy, even though I was totally overwhelmed with what was going on. I was in peace. My children were in peace. We weren't listening crazy anymore. So uh, I totally went off there, I guess. But it's like I have such emotion wrapped around what I have been through. I don't like to go back there. But I realize that people really struggle. And I feel like they need to know they're not alone, that this is really happening. And it can it can be stopped. And I think that's where we're going to segue and we're going to go into the next steps of what you did to get back control of your finances and your life. And, and a lot of that was these drives learning about this thing called, you know, velocity banking, that there's this, this strategy that you heard this gentleman talking about where numbers just appeared or disappeared. And, you know, when it was debt, it was just disappeared. And that sounds too good to be true for a lot of people, a lot of people. And listen, mark my words. I just did a YouTube episode today. We just crossed for the first time ever, the $1 trillion mark in credit card debt. People, and not only that, that was followed with record sales for Black Friday online, $9.8 billion, up 7.5%. When we're in a, a really difficult financial time where inflation is still running hot, people are still spending money, but they're racking up credit cards because once a luxury then becomes a necessity. And that's what so many people are dealing with right now. They don't know how to shed the things that they're doing. Hence, they're living off credit cards and they're one letter, one, you know, pink slip away, you know, or one layoff away from being devastated financially or one walking away from a toxic relationship step away from being devastated. But that's not really the case. I think a lot of people think, oh, I, I, there's nothing that this will help me with. I'm living paycheck to paycheck. I'm buried in debt. It's just over for me. There's nothing I can do. So that you found that there was something you can do. So can we just maybe start at the fundamental level and just walk people through what is infinite or I almost said infinite banking? What is velocity banking? And how did it help you? And what are the things that you used it for so that we can give some folks that are listening some hope that there is a way out? Well, I think that the real game changer uh, for me was the credit card payments. 
And I'm dealing with people that do that every day. So if you have a $600 credit card payment and maybe a $400 credit card payment and maybe a $50 credit card payment, there are ways that you can work your expenses that you're going to be spending anyway, right? We're going to be buying food today. Uh, We're going to be buying gas for our cars. Uh, we're going to buy clothes. We're going to pay our electric bills. We're going to, you know, pay for Netflix, whatever. Uh, people don't realize that if we just tweak our finances, if we just start putting those expenses, for example, on a credit card, and let's say your food bill is six hundred dollars a month, and you know you're going to be spending six hundred dollars this month, well, why not put that on your six hundred dollar payment credit card? That satisfies your payment for the month. Now you can just use the credit card to buy your food. Uh, It's just little stupid things that we should know, but I had no clue. And I'm learning a lot of people out there have no clue. Another thing is a line of credit. I had no idea what a line of credit was. I did not have any idea that there was a difference between a loan and a line of credit. That is what I teach constantly every day is teaching people the difference between what you're getting at the bank. The bank is not all bad, but it is to benefit them. It's not set up to help us. Uh, It's set up to help us to make them richer. So if you know how to use these lines of credit, instead of taking loans, that alone is going to save you because you can do income transfers into the line and it satisfies that payment. So if you have a $500 car payment a month and you're paying that in a loan and all you do, all you do is transfer that into a line you have just gained $500 in cash flow by the way you're using your income in that line of credit. Simple, simple things that can absolutely change your finances today. It's not something that we have to wait on. Uh, the only thing you have to wait on is if you have a low credit score. We have to work on that a little bit to get that up. But, but if you're working with credit cards, I have seen 40 to 90 point boosts within the next reporting period. So we're not talking something that's going to be a Dave Ramsey two and three years out, maybe 10 years out. We're talking, it could start for you today. It depends on what situation that you have. That's incredible. Your real estate business lives and dies by the network and the connections that you make. I mean, after all, your network, well, it's your net worth. That's what you always heard, right? If that's an area where you desire improvement, well, Private Money Club, it's for you. PMC saves you precious time and money by bringing the real estate world, well, right to you, right in the palm of your hand. So get in on the action like so many others have by going to privatemoneyclub.com and sign up. Now, here's another thing that I that I think a lot of the folks listening to this, you know, feel good about. You know, for the last couple of years, not not these this past year and a half, but the last couple, we were in unprecedented low interest rate environment where you could get a mortgage or refinance your mortgage for two and a half, three, three and a half percent. And what did everybody do? Everybody rushed out and refinanced their mortgages, resetting the clock. Now, I know we know something that this audience doesn't, but hopefully we can kind of talk about this because this really, to me, sums up how to be on the right side or the wrong side of velocity of money. So when you get a mortgage and your rate, let's just say right now, folks listening, Let's pretend that there's a bank that does a big national campaign where they offer two and a half percent fixed 30 year mortgages. How many of you would rush to that bank or how many people do you think would rush to that bank to grab one of those two and a half percent 30 year fixed mortgages? There would be literally there'd be a line across the city and the state waiting to get one of those mortgages. But what people don't realize is although the rate is low which reduces your monthly payment, you're actually hurting yourself because you are resetting the velocity clock. So if any of you have ever looked at your mortgage statement, which I I just did this, I've done it before and I've known this, but Christy, I, I looked at mine on my house the first time because I had a, a pretty low interest rate on this house that we own. And I looked at it and look at how much money goes to principal and how much money goes to interest. 
Mine, I believe it was about 85% of every payment I made went to interest. The rest went to principal, which was hardly anything. And that continued on for a period of about seven years. So folks, when you think you're paying a low interest rate, because the stated rate, the two and a half or three and a half percent is super low and you feel good about that, you're missing the velocity of how your money is being used by the bank or how the money is actually being charged by the bank. Because if 85% of every payment of that cheap 2.5% fixed 30-year mortgage is going to interest, how much are you actually paying to the bank? Is it really 2.5% or 3.5%? No, it's a lot more. The velocity of what you're paying is what matters. So Christy, can you just dissect that? Because you're much better at it than I am. Well, what I tell people today that if they are looking at purchasing a home, don't even get a mortgage. Let's just go straight into a first lien HELOC. Uh, you can do a new purchase with that. Uh, that will sit. But people, hold directly. on. But but people would say, wait a second, that's like eight percent interest. Yeah, I know. But when you look at what, like for example, the two. Let's say you've got a two percent uh, mortgage rate. Okay. Uh, take that two times two, so you've got four. Now add a zero. 40% interest is what you're going to be paying instead of that little 2%. That's the deception. That's the American dream to own the home. Uh, the American dream is to make the banks richer. So when you know that you're going to be paying a much higher interest rate than what they've actually quoted you at that 2%, uh, you know, just to step back a minute, I have people say to me all the time, well, how did you get that? How do you figure that it's two times? Uh, look at your doc your documents. Look at the mortgage contract that you signed. Go to your closing documents. They have to disclose that now. They can no longer hide behind the 2% or the 4% or the 8%. People are in 8% mortgages today that is eight times two is 16 you're paying 160 percent you are buying the bank's house first because they're front loading that interest so every payment just like chris said uh you're going to be making bunches of interest up front then as you get to the seven year mark you might get to be adding a little bit more to your principal and then at the 15 year mark you're going to get half going to your home by then. So half interest, half principal. It's a complete setup, but it's front loaded. So, you know, I'll have people buck me all the time and they say, yeah, but you're talking over the term of the mortgage, you know, that it's the 160% uh, right on, but they are front loading that interest so that you're hitting that 160% all the way up to the front. And then what is so bad, <laughs> what is really just crazy, whoever the genius is that came up with mortgages, wow, I'd like to shake his hand because he was a genius when it came to becoming a billionaire. Because it might have been a her. Run, it might have been, but I don't know. It was 1929-ish, I think, so <laughs> pretty sure it might not have been. But if they, if they front load that interest, what they will do uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you'll start getting refinance papers about the fourth year that you're into that mortgage. And guess what? They're always going to offer you a deal. They're going to say, well, you're at, you know, 8%. We're going to cut you back to 7.5% and you're going to have an extra $200 a month. And then, you know, we're even going to give you $25,000 of your, um, your equity out of the home so you, you can use it for whatever you want. Who wouldn't jump all over that, you know, me too, 15 years ago. Uh, but that is doing nothing but resetting that 30-year mortgage. You're getting ready to pay all of that interest again. It is sad. It is really, you know, I have said it before. I, I talk to people every day uh, in this situation, and I literally could get in the floor in a fetal position and cry with them. Because it is sad. We are literally getting raped of our money. And people are working hard to just make their house payment. And you're not even gaining the home is what's hilarious. You are you're literally paying the bank just to hold that mortgage for you until you get to about the 15th year, you start making some headway. 
Wow. And you know, the other thing that's so amazing, and it just shows you how smart banks are, which is, you know, why the, the sometimes the best thing to do is just understand banking and you'll understand a lot more. So when you think about why would mortgages be front loaded for the first seven years? Well, the banks have done the research for us so that we don't have to. And they found out that the average person in this country, probably in the world, will either move or refinance every seven years. It follows the short-term debt cycle. So the short-term debt cycle is a cycle that basically when interest rates go up and then when interest rates go down, that's the cycle. It's about a five to seven year period. So think about that. If interest rates go from low to high, high to low every five to seven years, and the average person moves because of relocation, bigger houses, whatever, now you've got the perfect formula for knowing when everybody's going to refinance or or need a new mortgage so that banks created literally created the amortization tables to favor the bank so that the first seven years is the most lucrative for them. And some of you are still not believing me. So then why is it that banks sell the mortgages sometimes almost immediately after the mortgage is done? So you go into, uh, I'll pick on Bank of America, Bank of America, you get a mortgage, you get your first statement, it says Bank of America. Then you get a letter saying that the new servicing company for your mortgage is now XYZ Mortgage. It's not Bank of America anymore. And you're like, oh, I wonder what happened. Bank of America sold your mortgage. Why? Because it was very lucrative to sell it in the first seven years because all the interest is up front. So that's a huge business. It's a huge business because all the money to be made is every seven years. Bank of America knows they'll just do another one and another and, and they'll make all their money up front. I mean, literally like you can hate the banks, but that's genius. It that's is. freaking brilliant. Like sign me up for that program. I mean, on the, the side where <laughs> I'm the bank, not where I'm yeah. paying the bank. <laughs> exactly. So you were asking why would you go from a two and a half percent into an eight percent? Uh, you probably are going to even out pretty good on your money there if you use the velocity banking concept to knock off. Uh, the eight percent. We don't get into an eight percent loan or line of credit and just sit there. Uh, that's not the point. The point is, is you are revolving that account like it was meant to revolve. Once you start revolving that account, uh, you're bringing the balance down every month, which means you are cutting off the interest at the legs. Because if you can hit it up front. Uh, and start bringing the balances down, even in a line of credit, you're going to win. And that's why with the most lines of credit, for, for example, the first lien HELOC, if you purchase a home with a first lien HELOC, you are very likely to have a 10-year payoff or less, uh, not a 30-year loan. Um, if you have a loan, let's say you have a mortgage and you start cutting it off at the beginning, like if we had caught your mortgage at the beginning in the first six months, you would already be out of that thing. It's the way we're using our money. We're taught to make payments, make your payment, make your payment on time and you'll get good credit. That's literally what we're taught. And you put a little bit over here in the savings. But when we learn, it's not about making payments. It's about paying off debt. You bought something and you want it. So let's pay that off and don't be throwing a bunch of our hard-earned hard money out to these interest payments. The payments are what we get stuck in because we set up our budget to make payments, right? I mean, we set up our budget. Okay, we have a house payment, we have a car payment, and then we've got this uh, uh, credit card payment over here. And oh yeah, I got a personal loan. I mean, it's all about budgeting our money leaving us just enough to eat on practically and some household expenses. And then we're broke. We are literally, the paycheck's gone. We had more month than money and here we go again. So it's just a cycle. Let's make some more payments. Whereas I teach, let's forget about your payments. Let's see what we can get you into that's going to serve you. Let's find banks that's going to serve you. Let's find lines of credit that's going to serve you. 
One more thing I'll throw out is people are always saying, well, just throw your cash flow onto the principal. What does it matter? You don't have to go through all this shenanigans, you know, let's just throw the extra money on there. Kind of the Dave Ramsey approach. Well, I tell you why, when you have two little girls and they want to go to the book fair at school and you can't give them five bucks because you're so freaking broke. But then again, Dave Ramsey says, take that five bucks. They don't need the books. You need to pay off your home. Okay, I'm going to throw five bucks onto my mortgage. It's 150000 at least, you know, and it's like, it's, it's just insanity. It's insanity. I want my daughters to go to the book fair. I could not afford to do that for them when they were little. That breaks my heart today. And here I am trying to make up for all those years now. but. People can't take their last 50 bucks in a month and throw their cash flow into a loan where it completely disappears. When you put it into that loan, it is gone. You're not going to get it back unless you refinance that loan, right? So that's what I'm saying is you have to be uh, wise about what it is that we're doing here. And you have to know there's a better way. You don't have to set in mortgage payments. You don't have to set in loan payments. Now, is the same true for cars and other types of loans, equipment financing? I mean, you know who really gets screwed is not just homeowners, but also business owners that have to finance their equipment. I mean, dentists are, are some of the, the worst that get screwed. I mean, the way that they, because, you know, to be a dentist, you need a lot of equipment and the equipment financing and the way that they get charged the interest on those, that's high. I, I can't even believe it's legal. So would velocity yeah. banking work for those scenarios as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I have told my husband many times we drive by. I, I don't know if I should say them out loud, but we'll, we'll call them title loan companies. What an absolute disgrace to the American people that they would take a person's last asset. They have a paid off car. They'll take that title and they'll charge them 32 percent interest. Up front. For them to have $500 for Christmas, that is so, that is just, that should be so illegal, like you said. Uh, that is heartbreaking to see that. And I've told him when we drive by, I just want to sit outside of the door and catch these people as they're going in. I will give you $500 if you will sit down and let me teach you how to work your finances. Uh, it's, it's just that. And the poorest of the poor is what's going to those places. And they're just getting taken more advantage of. So I'm I'm with you. Yes, every single loan out there can be turned into a line. It takes a little bit of strategy sometime, especially for the people who are really starting on the bottom. I started on the bottom, though. You can stand up. You can stand up. You can keep moving forward. Uh, and it's a beautiful life. Once you figure out how to use your money, you don't have to make $10,000 a month. I have people that make $1,800 a month and they're making it. Uh, I am a real advocate for making yourself better. Uh, we do it. Okay. Uh, I have people, well, I'm praying the Lord will bring me. No. I, I agree. The Lord wants us to succeed, but we need to get up and make it happen. Uh, we make it happen. Nobody, the government's not going to, wow, I could go into a whole nother segment on that. People are waiting for the government to give them something, a handout, you know, pay off a student loan. When we get out of that mindset of waiting for the handout and let's take a hand up, like Velocity Banking will give us, it will change your life, and you'll never have to think about what the government's doing for you financially. A welfare check, that's just to keep you under. That's not to lift you up. We need to come up out of that. We need to make ourselves better. Uh, it, talking about the things that the Lord will do for us, he will help us up, but he wants you to stand up and walk. He, he's not an enabler. He's a helper. So I just feel like that people need to stop the mentality of, oh, well, I make 5000 a month. That's the best that I can do. I was there, too, and I don't believe that anymore. I believe that we can become what we want to become when we have a vision in front of our face to do it. Love it. And I love I, that's one thing, you know, in, in all of your 
clients and just anybody that knows you knows this. You're such a giver. I mean, you're like what you were saying, you wish you could just go there and stand outside the door and catch the people before they go in to take, you know, and put their one of their only assets in their car or their house up as collateral so they can get a, a I would call that a usury loan, you know, but yes. 30 or 29 percent loan just so they can go buy gifts for their kids. I mean, like. Folks, this happens every day and it's going to happen more and more. But I mean, the, the fact that like you even brought that up, it kind of just it's touching because I know for a fact it's not something you're just saying. It's something that you would literally do until the cops came and dragged you off of that property, which they certainly would do that. But you give so much away for free on your YouTube channel. Fantastic. And, and that's where a lot of your content, you know, lives. Is that what you envisioned? Like when you first started teaching this, like, how did that transition happen? Because folks, if you don't know, like fantastic, go to the, go to YouTube and subscribe to her channel. She's got tons of videos on there and her page is, is just exploded. And, but how did that happen? That, that is a total God thing. I just started reaching out, wanting to reach people in my community. And I found that I was repeating myself to the very, very few that will listen in my area. Uh, but I thought uh, I had somebody mention Alex, I guess. I had reached out to Alex Albaron. He's a business consultant for me. And he had told me, you need to put it on YouTube. And I'm like, that's so embarrassing. I'm not doing that. And, you know, he talked to me for probably took me three months to upload my first YouTube video. Uh, and I don't know. It just took off. I, I can't even explain how that happened. But I will tell you this. My giving increased before my channel took off. Uh, I had I am a huge about uh, tithing and giving. So it's like I, you know, the Lord says, try me and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven that I'll pour you out so much that you can't even receive it all. And I was like, OK, I'm going to put that to the test with this. Uh, I literally increased my giving uh, a lot. So when I first started, uh, I wasn't able to give five thousand dollars a month. OK, I'm just going to be transparent. Uh, my giving was probably more like two hundred dollars a month uh, when I increased it to one thousand dollars a week. Wow, that is the week that the YouTube channel took off. Um, so people say, well, that's just coincidence. Hmm. Maybe, but I don't believe so. So I have learned through my life that anytime I wanted to make something happen, I look for somebody else to help because that's where it's going to happen. Uh, the very first experience I had with giving was when I was still working at the Union Hall. Um, I had There was a member that had had a stroke and he was out of work and he was about to lose his house. And so I heard a minister say, um, if you can't make your house payment, help somebody else make theirs. And I thought, wow, that's crazy. But I could not make my house payment that month. And it was only 600 a month back then. And so this guy came in and, you know, he was sitting talking to me and it, just pitiful, just pitiful how the stroke could really hurt him and his work. And so I just thought that came to my head. You know, it was just an opportunity. I had $500. I did not have the 600. 625 was what I needed. And I said to him, I wrote him a check and I said, I want you to put this on your house. And he cried right there in front of me. I cried with him. And you know what? That week I had $1,000 come back to me totally unexpected from a family member that lived in another state saying, hey, I just felt led to give you this cash and literally $1,000. That was my proof right there that that is a real game changer when it comes to your giving. At how much do you want to succeed? How much are you willing to give? Because I feel like, you know, this is a seed time and harvest earth that we live in. And so you plant the seeds and then with a little time, it'll come back to you tenfold, a hundredfold. It's a beautiful, it's beautiful. And I, I, you know, I don't talk a lot of spiritual stuff on my channel, even only because people aren't ready for that. 
And it seems a little bit foolish to them, but I live that. I live that every day. I love to give, and I think that the more I give, the more I will receive. That's just a biblical principle, a spiritual law that you can't get by. But you you said something in that, and that is that it's a law. And yeah. if any of you understand the laws, like the law of gravity, they right. can't be broken and they can't be beat. So if you think you can beat laws, go to the top of whatever you're in right now, your building, and just jump. And just flap your arms and do whatever you are. Try to beat gravity and let me know how that works out. Or actually, we might just have to read about it. See, it's not so much just about getting biblical or religious. It's simple fundamentals of giving. And and I think that's the wholehearted thing. And I think that's why so many people don't, you know, make it on YouTube because it, it's just a long give. It really is. It's your time. And when people are like, oh, giving, I don't have any money to give. Well, that's when you need to give because mm -hmm. that's exactly how it works. Listen, like I, I don't talk about it enough either, but I, you know, I did a TEDx talk for my daughter and it talks a lot about giving and everything I've done that's got me to where I'm at was because of giving, because I can tell you there was a t another time in my life where I didn't give. I took, you know, when I was a, in Wall Street, it wasn't a giving type of industry. It was just, it just seemed like all I did is take and all I, 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 I don't know. I, I I don't know how to explain it. And everything when I was in that state got taken from me over and over. It was almost like a vicious cycle. I'd, I'd make it and then I'd give it all back because it would get taken from me. But then I flipped and I flipped because somebody said to me, give your best stuff away for free. That's what they said to me. And this was in the early days when I was creating content. They said, and because I'm trying to figure out, oh, how do I create a package that I can sell and make money because I'm broke. And, and And he said to me, he said, give your best stuff away for free. And, and I don't know why, but I did. I just started giving it away for free. And I started putting it out on social media. And I started putting it on YouTube, just like you did. And I just kept doing it over and over. And then I fell in love with the giving. You know, it's kind of like, like, think about how, let's say you're a ditch digger, right? Two ditch diggers. One ditch digger just gets there because he wants to finish his job as soon as he can, hates his job, complains about it all day. And then the other ditch digger just falls in love with digging. Like, yes, they're digging a ditch. One can't wait till the ditch is done so he can then go on to dig another ditch. But the other one is just in love with digging and just continues to do that. Folks, you got to just fall in love with the digging. And the digging is the giving. That's the hardest part. Once you fall in love with the digging, the rest becomes easy because then it just flows to you. It, it's just how it has always worked. It's the velocity. You want to talk about velocity banking? That's velocity banking. It's just the flow of money. And you all have to figure out, do you want the money to flow away from you like you've been doing most of your life? Or do you want the money to flow to you? Yes, there's an element of learning, but there's also an element of giving. You have to believe first in yourself and you have to give. Christy gives her time. That's what she gives and gives money because she gave she gave her time when she didn't have money, but then she had money. So then she gives her time and her money. And where's the end to giving? There is no end. You just keep giving. And the funny thing is, is the more you give, the more time you put in, the more money you give, the more that shows up on the doorstep. And you're like, dang, now I got to give more. And then more right. shows up. Now, folks, you guys don't have to believe this. Christy was just saying that. I'm just, I'm just saying the same darn thing. But that is the truth. And until you realize that, nothing is ever going to change. But you could always start by just getting on Vantastic. Go to that YouTube channel, subscribe, and start watching the videos to figure out how you can erase and get rid of all that debt. Pay off your car. Get rid of your mortgage. And stop living a life of financial slavery and start living a life of abundance because that's exactly what you're going to learn with Velocity Banking. And no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So as we get to the end of this, Christy, like, what else would you like to say to this audience? Well, I think that we touched on the most important part here on the end is the giving part. But, you know, your vision is so important. If you are just getting through day to day like I was, you know, you get up, you get your kids ready for school, uh, you get ready for work, you drop them off, you go to work, you come home, you cook, you clean, uh, put the kids to bed and then get up and do it all over again. When you feel like that you're in a cycle, uh, you're in a rut, 
uh, that's when you need to come up out of that. You need to, you know, write down what it is. It is silly, as silly as it's going to sound. You know, if you want to make ten thousand more dollars in the year twenty twenty four, put a date on it. Put it in front of your face. You know, uh, I told my daughter last night. She's just saying. I think that I'm putting on weight. She's like, I think I'm going to start dieting. And I said, write the weight that you want down and put it in front of your face. You know, take lipstick and write them the pounds you want to be in front of you on the mirror and watch it unfold. When we have a vision set ahead of us, uh, it doesn't matter what that vision is. If it's believable for us, we can do it. We can accomplish it. So I feel like that people... Just struggle, you know, because I just remember feeling so hopeless and helpless when I was in the situation that I was with the bad marriage. Then when I came out of it trying to figure out how I was going to make ends meet, it's just a hopeless generation that we're in today because everything just seems so out of whack. Everywhere I look, people are struggling. And I feel like if we can give them the hope that one change your thoughts. How are you thinking about yourself? How are you thinking about your future? How are you feeling about money? Is money a struggle for you? If it is, it's going to stay a struggle. You have to think in abundance all the time. You know, don't be saying, well, we can't afford that. I can't get this. I can't have that. Change the way you're speaking. Uh, turn it positive. Say, I can have that. I'm going to have that. And when you get that mind frame uh, to where you know you can do it, you know you can make it happen, that will lift you up in itself. Then when you start looking for ways you can give, you know, just like you said, if, if you can give time, that's going to lead to more money. Anytime we help people, it's going to come back to us. That's what we're put down here to do. I look at myself as a distribution center. When I am giving, or I'm sorry, when I have been given, I turn around and give. It's constantly in, out, and it just comes back around. So more will be given to the giver. That's a biblical principle. We can't get by that. It says in plain English that the more we give, the more we receive. And when we're out planting seeds, uh, the one who gives is going to give us more seeds to plant. So we're not like, you know, the Dead Sea is sitting here not flowing. There's no inlet, no outlet. It's only in on it, right? There's no outlet. So when we're just hoarding, 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 we are just becoming stagnant. We need to be giving. We need to be releasing. I'm so glad that came out today because I feel like that people don't understand that spiritual principle. Uh, it is a law and it's going to happen. You just have to make it happen by starting. You have to start. So when you're there, Velocity Banking just comes in and you're free from debt very quickly. I have people that are free from debt within three to six months most of the time, as crazy as that sounds, without a mortgage, of course. And then the mortgage, you're talking seven years max, not 30. So you just have to change your thoughts. How are you thinking? Where are you putting your money? And your life can get better, and it can get better pretty fast. I mean, it's quite a spin. So I'm just excited that you had me on today to share that because I want everybody to have hope. I, especially going into this Christmas season, I can't tell you how many Christmases that I've had that I have wondered how I'm going to afford anything for my daughters. One Christmas, I could afford nothing. So when you've been through those situations, you know people are struggling. They may not be out there telling you they are, but they are. And I think that we need to be looking for ways that we can help and lift people up. And I do that through my channel because if I can teach people to get their finances straightened out, that could straighten out their marriage. That could straighten out uh, a whole lot of things. So I'm very excited to share that. I love it. And real quick, how can people learn more about you and your channel? <laughs> I have a website, fantasticfinances.com. Um, you can go on YouTube and just put in fantastic. I'll pop up. So very easy to find. I have a private Facebook group as well that you can sign on to and ask any question that you want to about your finances. And there's always people there willing to help as well. I love it. Well, folks, you just got 
just an unbelievable gift by listening to this podcast. You literally did. And, and if you took nothing else other than the giving part, then that's really the best you can get from, from this. It, it will take you so far in life. So I appreciate all of you for joining us for this episode. Make sure you check out Fantastic on YouTube and Fantastic Finance. We'll put that in the description. And until the next episode, folks, have a beautiful holiday season and go out there and give as much as you can. We'll see you on the next one.